The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to operate Track Wrestling's mat side scoring system when running an electronic tournament. Specifically, this video focuses on scoring a folk style match in an individual tournament. Um, the first screen that you'll be looking at um, shows you or allows you to search for the matches that are assigned to your mat. So someone will get you logged in to here and all you'll have to do is select the mat that you're on and click on the search button. And the system will bring back a list of matches um, that are assigned to your mat with the top match being the one that you should wrestle first. So if you click on the match, uh, the system will load the match for you um, and at the top it will tell you also who's on deck and who's in the hole. That way while you're scoring a match if somebody behind you wants to know who's coming up they can look over your shoulder and easily see um, who's up. Um, notice the go time listed here is currently listed as any time that's because this is the first match of the day for these wrestlers but if they had wrestled a match earlier it would show um, when they were eligible to wrestle again and actually the system would prompt you if you tried to load the match before the go time and ask you to make sure um, that you wanted to wrestle it early. Um, you also notice that the each wrestler has a position and at the start of the match the position is neutral and the um, scoring options below correspond with the position that the wrestlers are in. So right now, since they're neutral, each wrestler can get a takedown along with some standard scoring options. You also notice the color drop-down box. So right now, Austin is green and Brandon is red, but if the referee decided to change that, I would simply change the drop-down box and make Austin red, which automatically switches Brandon to green. Down below, you'll notice um, the score clock for the period. Um, I can start my clock by clicking on the start button and notice that the green uh, or that the background of the clock turns green when the clock is running. If I click on stop, it stops the clock and the background turns red. Within um, Firefox, there's keyboard shortcuts, um, which you can press your down arrow to start the clock, um, and the down arrow will also stop the clock. So if I press the down arrow while it's running, the clock stops. If I press the down arrow again, the clock starts. Within Internet Explorer, the keyboard shortcut is the tilde key, which is up next to the number one key. Um, if I press the tilde key, it stops the clock, as you notice. If I press it again, it, star it starts the clock. So you've got some keyboard shortcuts. And we also have a device. Um, some, some computers will have this. It's a handheld device that plugs in via USB with a switch on it. And you can simply switch the um, switch one way to start the clock and switch it back to stop the clock. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to start and stop your clock. Um, as the clock is running, you can click on what's happening in the match. So let's say Austin gets a takedown. I would click takedown and notice that the position updates along with the scoring options. Now that Austin got the takedown, he's on top and he can get near fall. And Brandon is on the bottom and he can get an escape and a reversal along with the other standard things. Um, so let's say now that Austin uh, gets an escape and I click on escape. Notice that it's logging in the center of the screen what's happened, what's you, what you've been clicking on. Um, and if you made a mistake, let's say I, I shouldn't have selected escape here, it really was a reversal, I can simply click on the option that I, and, and it will ask me if I want to delete it, change it, insert something above it, or cancel. So let's say I wanted to change that to a reversal, I would click change, and then click on reversal. And now the score of the match is updated. Notice it's 2-2. Two to two. What happened in the match is updated. Um, and the clock is still running. So um, also notice that the time is logged next to what happened. So the takedown happened at 107, and the reversal happened um, at 47. So now that this period is over, um, I'm going to go to the next um, option. So I'm currently in period 1. I'm going to click Next and that will take me to the choice. So let's say that red has choice and they choose to defer and now green chooses bottom. When I click on bottom it automatically takes me to the start of the second period with green on bottom, red on top and the period option or the period time is ready to go. So I can start my clock um, and notice that the the period boxes. These boxes up here correspond to the period, so it tells me that I'm in the second period. Um, if you were connected to a physical clock, we sell score clocks that would um, that you can run using the system as well. You simply plug the score clock into the computer and it runs the clock. 
and these periods or these boxes correspond to the period boxes um, on that physical clock. Um, during the match I can put in comments so I can say um, red looks tired and um, you know any comment I want to obviously uh, um, probably not going to put something like that but I just wanted to point out that you can put in comments and usually people from home can watch what's going on they could read the comments that are being put in. You can also use the comments to note things like the referee in the match um, different things like that. So whatever you put in the comments box gets noted on the on the bout sheet. Um, so this period is now over so I'm gonna go next notice that the system tells me red has choice because it remembers green had choice in the previous period so now red is going to choose bottom and I'm immediately taken to the third period where I can start my clock um, let's say I start the clock and a short while into it uh, the, we have to break for blood time I'm going to stop the clock and notice over here I have blood time for green, injury time for green, and recovery time. And the same is true over here, blood time, injury time, and recovery time for red. If I want to set a clock to run something like blood time, I click the set button first, which sets the focus on that clock, and now I can start it, um, just like the other clock. Um, when blood time is over, I simply click stop to stop the blood time and I pick which clock I want to focus back on by clicking set on it. So I'm going to focus back on the main clock. So I hit set. This clock gets big. I know I've got the focus on it and I could start this clock. Um, let's say now that uh, a whole bunch of things happen. Uh, red gets a reversal, gets near fall, green gets an escape, gets a takedown, and puts red on, on, on his back. And all that stuff happens so fast that uh, there's a bunch of confusion and the referee and the coaches all have to get together to see what's going on with the match. The easiest thing to do is to click summary on the left hand side and the summary page will show you a quick summary of everything that's happened in the match so far. So in period one this is what happened, um, then red had choice, uh, deferred, green chose bottom. You've got the whole summary of the match right in front of you so that they can review it. And When they're done reviewing it you can simply click match and it takes you right back to the match um, where you were at in the match and you can continue scoring. Um, let's say that now I start this match or start the match again I'm running and the match ends because of a pin. So I stop the clock and regardless of how the match ends I'm always going to click result in the left menu whether it's a decision, a fall, a tech fall, no matter what happens when the match is over I always click result in the left menu this page defaults in who it thinks won based on the information entered. And what you should do, you always have to double check the system has it right. So for example, in this case, green had more points, the match ended with time left on the clock, so the system thinks there was a pin, and it thinks the person winning the match got the pin. So you should always have the person who won the match walk over to the table and look at the computer screen and verify that the name listed or highlighted big is their name. Because sometimes if the uh, wrestler that was losing the match um, got the pin, you know, they would walk over and catch the air. If you had to switch the winner, you simply click on the other person and it highlights their name as the winner. You also double check the win type because the system is just, again, making its best guess. You want to make sure that um, the correct win type has been selected. Put in the fall time, which is based on whatever time was left on the clock when you come here. So most of the time you're not going to have to update that and the score is also listed. And finally the match end time. So once you've double checked and verified that everything is correct, click on the save result button and it will take you right back to your matches list where you can select the next bout um, and score it just like we scored that match. Uh, a few other things to note. Some uh, tournaments use our, our mat chat which allows you to communicate with the head table right from uh, this, this system and the requirement is that someone at the head table needs to have that chat system open in order to be able to read um, what you're trying to tell them. So if, you, if they have it open and you're able to use the system you, and you want to send them a message, let's say you want to call this guy um, to, the, to Matt2 because he hasn't reported. I can click on chat in the left menu and I can say please call uh, that guy to Matt2. And if they have it open, you send that message and and they would
would get it and be able to call them, and you wouldn't have to send someone up to the head table to to uh, to get them called. Another possibility, uh, this is going to be rare, but something I should point out anyways, if you lost your connection um, with the head table or with the internet or whatever it is, and you wanted to continue wrestling, let's say you clicked on matches and this page didn't load, you can always go to history and click on matches, and it will show you the most recent list of matches that it was able to retrieve. So you could continue wrestling using this list, and in the meantime, send someone um, to contact someone at the head table so that they can come over and help you get your connection restored. So that's been the video or the training uh, video for how to score a folk style match in an individual tournament.